Once more he stepped into the street and to his lips again laid his long pipe of smooth straight cane. And there he blew three notes. Such sweet soft notes as yet musicians cunning never gave the enraptured air. There was a rustling that seemed like a bustling of merry crowds jostling and pitching and hustling. Small feet were pattering, wooden shoes clattering, little hands clapping and little tongues chattering. And like fowls in a farmyard when barley is scattering, out came the children running. <laughs> boys and girls with rosy cheeks and flaxen curls and sparkling eyes and teeth like pearls tripping and skipping ran merrily after the wonderful music with shouting and laughter stood as if they were changed into blocks of wood, unable to move a step or cry to the children merrily skipping by, could only follow with the eye that joyous crowd at the piper's back. But how the mare was on the rack and the wretched consul's bosoms beat as the piper turned from the high street to where the vase rolled its waters right in the way of their sons and daughters. However, he turned from south to west and to Koppelberg Hill his steps addressed, and after him the children pressed. Great was the joy in every breast. He never can cross that mighty top. He's forced to let the piping drop, and we shall see our children stop. When lo, as they reached the mountainside, a wondrous portal opened wide, as if a cavern was suddenly hollowed. And the piper advanced, and the children followed. When all were in to the very last, the door in the mountainside shut fast. 